Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn de Guzman with Investing News Network. In this episode, I'm speaking with Corey Bellick, CEO of Vancouver-based Can Alaska Uranium. Hello, Corey. Oh, hello, Marilyn. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. It's beautiful weather and, and you know, we're doing great work this year and, and things just really couldn't be better. Yeah, that's great. We're, we're finally, you know, getting some good weather. Um, let's start a conversation, Corey, with just an introduction of Can Alaska Uranium and the projects that you're working on at this time. Uh, it's, it's a great company. We, we are a junior explorer centered on the Athabasca Basin in Canada, the Saudi Arabia of uranium, really. It's where you find these big, high-grade deposits like Cigar and MacArthur River. And, and now we're drilling some very high-grade mineralization on a couple of our projects in the eastern Athabasca Basin region around all that critical infrastructure. So in terms of the company, we are built on the uranium portfolio centered in Saskatchewan in the Athabasca Basin and, you know, we've got a great uh, little nickel portfolio going as well in the neighboring province of Manitoba and the Thompson Nickel Belt. So, you know, the company is a junior explorer. We go out there, we try and make the discoveries and get into the hands of the producers that will take it through to production. That's, that's our game. Yeah, you, you have quite a bit of uh, portfolio of projects, but I understand that you've had some great results from some of these projects that you've done. Can you talk a bit more about that? Oh, we've had fantastic success in Q1 of 2023. We, we really entered 2023 on a high, having a brand new high-grade discovery at our West MacArthur project, really close to the MacArthur River mine owned by Cameco Norano. Our partner is Cameco in West MacArthur. So, you know, we drilled those very high-grade holes in, in, you know, the summer of 2022. We were really excited to get back at it in Q1, and we did. And we came off uh, uh, roughly half of our program. We've got $10 million planned for West MacArthur this year. And we've, we've done about half that work now. And we continue to drill high-grade mineralization by our estimate up to 16% grade in the basement, uh, in some of the basement holes. But importantly, we've expanded and tested at the unconformity. And we've got over 160 meters of mineralization already connected and completely open in the unconformity and within the basement. So, and it's what we're calling the pike zone. Our pike zone has really grown this year from that work. And then our partner, Dennis, and our Moon Lake South Joint Venture, they operate the Moon Lake South JV. They drilled a 1.4% grade intersection over about uh, 8.7 meters above the unconformity, completely open again at the unconformity and on strike. So again, a second part of our portfolio delivering high-grade mineralization, brand new discoveries, We've got two of them on the go right now in the eastern Athabasca. So that's just an incredible result from Q1 of this year. Just just fantastic results from the Athabasca region. So where do you go from there? I, uh, you have a new drilling program, I understand. You're correct. We're going to get on the ground for the very first time at our Geeky project. That's a new sort of new option arrangement with Basin Energy out of Australia. They're coming in, they're, uh, they're spending money this summer to advance that project. The very first drilling, it's a project generation uh, process that we go through. We generate this project, brought in Basin Energy as part of uh, an investment into it to de-risk it and go out and make a discovery. And it's right near the recent results from 92 Energy and Baseload where, um, where they've drilled on their Accu and GMZ discoveries. And, you know, it's the same type of target. So we're really excited to get out there first drilling programs with Basin Energy, and uh, hopefully further success within our uranium portfolio. So this, this again, could be an incredible summer for Can Alaska. Right. So for investors that are probably unfamiliar with what you do, your business proposition, could you just talk about, um, you know, the strategy that goes behind the decisions to drill and which areas to focus on um, in terms of, uh, you know, from an investor's perspective? So from an investment perspective, we deploy sort of a, a hybrid model where we project generate. We generate the ideas, we go out and stake the land or do deals to, to bring them into a portfolio. And we also actively explore. So where we see results coming, like West MacArthur, Moon Lake South, or perhaps a geeky, we'll go in and spend our own shareholders' money to advance those through to discovery. So, you know, West MacArthur is, is you know, we own 80% of that. So we're very willing to spend our money there because we're hitting high-grade mineralization of 25% uranium last year and and 16% this, uh, this winter. So, you know, we really deploy that hybrid model. We're always looking for opportunity to go out and project generate great ideas geologically that can turn into something of value for our shareholders, whether it's through our own spend 
or whether it's through bringing in outside parties to invest and move these projects forward. So we, we do have over 300,000 hectares of, of land in the Athabasca Basin, centered in the eastern Athabasca Basin, near all that critical mine and mill infrastructure. Um, we can't do it all. So we look for the right partners to come in and move these projects forward. And, you know, that's, that's how we go about our business. And, you know, it's about creating the layers of information that ultimately lead to that first drill hole and hopefully re result in a drill hole that's mineralized and really get that tiger by the tail. I always like to say tiger by the tail because, you know, these things are hard to find. And if you can get any kind of mineralization, you're off to the races. It shows potential, and that's what we look for. It's um, it's a great model that we deploy, and it's been very successful for us. And and the, the focus on uranium, um, you know, the market has seen some, um, you know, increases in sort of demand for uranium as nuclear nuclear energy um, reemerges. Uh, you know, as we look for more sustainable sources of energy, are you seeing this? Um, you know, demand for uranium continuing on for the next, you know, several years. Like, what are you seeing in the market right now for that? Mar for that? Well, my personal view is this is going to be a very long run, very different than what we saw in the last cycle about 15, 16 years ago. This has a very different foundation. And the foundation are new build-outs, the introduction of um, what's called military technology into civilian use, small modular reactors, which are really becoming an important part of the future for nuclear power generation, that clean energy base load power. Um, these small modulars open up completely different jurisdictions than historically was available to the larger reactor setups. Uh, and, and it's not fantasy. Two years ago, it seemed like fantasy. Now it's reality. Just in Canada alone, small modular reactors are being built. Ontario, by 2028, 300 megawatts of SMR technology going into the Darlington plant, generating clean electricity for 300,000 Canadian homes. That's just Canada. This is happening, starting to happen on a global scale. And when it does, what does it really mean? We need more uranium fuel. And that's where Can Alaska comes in, where we find the fuel that will eventually make its way into these reactors and generate that clean electricity. So the macros look brilliant. They look great. Um, if we want to get off of fossil fuels for clean energy production, um, it has to be a bigger part of the baseload energy solution. And, um, and that's... That's the way the future is looking, and this could be a great few decades of, uh, of nuclear build-out that's in front of us, and ultimately, more production of uranium, which is great for us to go find it. You know, we're out there to, we're out there to find these deposits. So, speaking of clean energy, you also have a diverse portfolio of other metals aside from uranium, and nickel is one of them. Uh, you recently made an acquisition uh, in Manitoba. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, you know, when one, no one wanted to talk about uranium for, for many years uh, post-Fukushima. Uh, we, we looked around and said, what can we do within that clean energy space? Well, you have to generate the clean electricity through nuclear. You have to move it through copper, but you have to store and deliver it to the end user in nickel and clean sulfide nickel, class one nickel. So we looked around, where in the world can Can Alaska go and project generate in one of the most prolific nickel belts in the world? And that was in the neighboring province of Manitoba, the Thompson Nickel Belt. It's historically the fifth largest nickel belt on the planet, sulfide nickel belt, home mostly to valet in terms of, of production. And, um, and there was opportunity there, so we took it. And we are the second largest landholder in that belt next to valet, just an incredible district scale portfolio of projects that we've now augmented through the purchase of the Mel Nickel deposit, which is up against some of our core projects in the, in the, in the Thompson Nickel Belt. And it has 82 million pounds of nickel starting a surface um, at 0.88% grade. That is a 43101 confirmed indicated resource. So this is just an incredible opportunity for us to add that to our portfolio which is built around exploration, but now has a tangible foundation in a, in a very good, very good nickel resource. So just an incredible asset to acquire in the last few months. And we're looking forward to finding ways to, uh, to monetize that for our shareholders and build value. So, you know, stay tuned for the future on that, but it, it certainly looks good in the nickel space as well for Can Alaska. Right. And um, what are your plans for the rest of the year? What are uh, some of your expected milestones for the near term? Well, in the near term, we have our, uh, our Geeky project moving forward. We're going to be drilling there in a few weeks' time. That'll carry us uh, into the middle part of the summer. 
uh, again, first ever drilling project and what is a uh, is a very exciting project in, in the uranium space. And then later in the fall, we look to get back into West MacArthur, where we've got 160 meters of mineralization at the Younger Forney and also within the basement. Some very high grades coming, very close to the MacArthur River mining operation. Our partner there is Cameco. So, you know, it's a great opportunity to get in there and continue to drill out that mineralization we've been working on for the last 12 months and, and build that story out. And then Moon Lake, uh, the Moon Lake South JV, you know, that's in the hands of Dennison as operator. But, you know, we'll have our meetings in a few weeks and we'll see what uh, what might unfold from that success. Again, 1.4% uranium over almost 9 meters is quite an achievement for the third ever drilling program on this project. And, you know, it's very near to their operations on the Wheeler River project, the Griffin and, and Phoenix deposits. So, you know, it has a lot of synergies with what they're trying to do in that part of the uh, eastern Athabasca Basin. So, you know, it's a great summer ahead of us on three of our core uranium projects. And, you know, we'll see what unfolds with the nickel space as well. But, you know, we've got an exciting lineup to carry us through the year for news flow and an opportunity for our shareholders to realize more discovery. And, um, yeah, it, it, I really couldn't be more excited. And uh, I can say the team isn't really more excited either. They're, they're anxious to get out there and get at it again. So, you know, we are doing some fantastic things for the next six months and leading us into 2024. Great. So we look forward to hearing more about uh you know, all the results that you're getting from the activities you'll be doing for the rest of the year. Oh, yeah. No, please stay tuned because uh, I think we've got an incredible lineup of work in front of us. And, you know, just in the uranium space alone, it is uh, really world class what we're doing. You know, two of our core projects are generating high grade mineralization on two brand new discoveries. Ah, that's just, um, that's unique. That's unique out there. And for a junior of our market cap, it's, um, it could be a wild ride coming in front of us. So hang on because it sure looks good. Great. Appreciate you speaking with me today. Well, thank you, Maryland. It's a real pleasure to tell a Cat Alaska story. It's a real pleasure to talk to you. And yeah, um, it's going to be a fantastic summer. Great. And thank you for watching. Join us again next time for another engaging conversation on CEO Insights.